Why on earth am I not interested in adding the brand new Aprilia Twyreg 660 adventure bike to my garage? It's probably the most asked question in my recent video. So today I want to break down exactly why I think the Aprilia isn't the bike for me. I'm also going to be answering a handful of common questions that I received over the last few videos, covering a range of topics from bike choices to parts to motor camping. So let's start things off with a common question that I received on a video that I posted a few weeks ago regarding gear that I wish I bought sooner. And what came to the question was the use of a steering dampener. And the most common question was, do I need a steering dampener for this kind of riding? And that kind of riding was most commonly gravel roads or even highway riding. If you are riding on gravel roads and you can feel that wandering effect of the front wheel. It doesn't feel very stable. You might be able to feel it wiggling or maybe just drifting a little bit in that gravel. It's pretty normal for gravel, but a stabilizer will help reduce that impact coming through the handlebars. The same can be said for riding on the highway. For me, the benefits of a steering dampener, although they help in those situations too, really best present themselves in more technical riding. I find that I like to have a stiffer feeling in my steering in general, but also when I'm riding more technical terrain and I have deflections from rocks and logs, or I'm going through some rough sand, that's where I think the benefits of a steering dampener really shine. All right, so let's move on to bikes because I know that's what you're most interested in hearing about. Now, the Aprilia Touareg was a very common bike brought up in my last video, but there was one other that was even more popular. That was the KTM 500 EXCF. Now, you know that I'm interested in possibly looking at a KTM 690 Enduro R and building a lightweight rally build just for my local trail riding. Now, loads of you in the comments said, forget the 690, jump straight for the 500. That's gonna be where the fun's at. And I want to agree with you. I want to jump onto a 500 too because I think I would love that engine and that lightweight feel so much better. But I have a couple of issues. Perhaps you could help me with them. First of all, I have to think about maintenance. Now I know the maintenance isn't as bad as it seems with the 500 because I'm not racing it. However, I have to ride about 45 minutes to an hour on the highway to get to my riding trails. And I have no interest in trailering my bike to get to those trails. I don't own a van or a pickup or a trailer and I have no intention in doing so. So I worry that having a 500, I may be putting too many miles on the freeway, on the highways, on those commuting runs to the trails. Now, if you're one of those people who think I really should be looking at the 500 over the 690, please let me know in the comments below. Put to rest my maintenance queries. Let me know how I can get the most usability out of that 500. Moving on to the Aprilia Touareg. So many people, like I said at the beginning of this video, asked why was that not on my shortlist? Why am I not interested in that bike? I mean, it's got such great reviews and many people just call it a better Tenere 700. And in many ways, it does look like that, but there's a couple of issues that just stop me even considering it. First of all, I just don't like the styling. And I know that's absolutely crazy for me to say because I ride a KTM and you know most people think that's ugly, but for me, the Touareg doesn't quite work for me. And I think that's a good thing. I think bikes like the Touareg and the KTM, I think their design is so polarizing that you either love or hate them. And I like bikes like that. Second of all, there is only one really small dealer, I believe, of Aprilia here in Perth, and that doesn't really quite sit right with me. I like to know that I've got a little bit more dealer support. And finally, I just don't want to own an Aprilia. Now, for many of you, that might be an odd thing for me to say, but it's just that the Aprilia brand has never really resonated with me. They've never created a culture or a scene that I'm necessarily interested in or part of. And so I just don't feel any inclination to want to buy or own that brand of motorcycle. Now, all of this is not to say that the Aprilia is a bad motorcycle. I imagine it is fantastic. The reviews have been incredible. The engine, the componentry, the features of that motorcycle, they all look really, really competitive in the market. Again, it's just a bike that's not for me. Okay, so the next question comes from a single viewer. I think it's quite interesting one, so I thought I'd bring it up here, and that is, should he buy an 850 GS or a 1250 GS for a cross Europe trip that he's planning with his brother? Now, the kind of riding that he's doing is gonna be mainly on road, and he's a pretty competent off-road rider. He's just a little bit nervous when it comes to riding on the road. The main worry is, is that he'll grow out of that 850 and want to buy the 1250 later on. So 
If anyone else has that question, let me put your mind to rest now. I've ridden both bikes, both are fantastic, but I believe the 1250 is actually easier to ride than the 850. And there's a couple of main reasons for that. Firstly, the lower seat height and the lower bike in general because of the 19 inch front wheel compared to the 21 on the 850 means that it's actually quite an easy bike to sit on and handle even for shorter riders. The second reason being is that the 1250 has its weight nice and low because of those cylinders and that results in a bike that is really well balanced and provides a lot of confidence to the rider. And finally, because you're heading into winter over in the Northern Hemisphere, one YouTube viewer has asked, is it beneficial to be wearing wool base layers when riding and moto camping? And to that, I say, absolutely. Merino wool does a really good job of not only keeping you warm, but also regulating your temperature due to its breathable characteristics. Now I will be breaking down my entire winter riding gear in a future video, but if you want to know the fundamental gear that I use when moto camping to stay warm and comfortable, check this video out right here.